All right, this video is all about delta T. Now, delta T isn't always called delta T. It's often called an air temp split or an air temperature split or just a temperature split. And it's the difference between the air temperature entering the evaporator coil, the temperature of the air itself entering the coil, between that and the air leaving the top of the coil. Now, first mistake often made in measuring a delta T is that people will measure it in between a return vent inside the house or building and a supply vent, an actual uh, supply diffuser or register. And the challenge there is, is that you're not going to get an accurate reading because you're going to have duct losses, the potential for duct leakage, so to either suck in warm air on the return side, and then also for gains to the ductwork because of them running through a hot attic or a basement or whatever the case may be, or vice versa. If it's cold outside, um, then it could affect the ducts negatively in that way. So you can't test them at the registers inside and, and get a lot of accuracy unless they're very, very close to the equipment. The correct way to measure is directly above and below the evaporator coil, but enough distance away that there's proper air mixing and that the probe isn't in the line of sight of the evaporator coil so that it's not affected by the radiant heat. We've talked a lot about that in taking proper temperature measurements and when you're measuring air you have to have proper air mixing and you don't want that coil surface to be line of sight to that probe. So the way we often say it in the trade is you don't want the cold surface or a hot surface looking at a temperature probe because it will affect the measurement of the probe. And the greater the mass of the probe the more likely it's going to affect that measurement. But regardless for as long as I can remember being in the trade, one of the most common measurements that a technician will take is the delta T. And so they'll take a pocket thermometer and they'll stick one in the return and they'll stick one in the supply. And the old rule of thumb is you're looking for a 20 degree split, a 20 degree delta, which is delta is just another term for difference. In this case, it's a temperature difference. So you're looking for that 20 degree delta. That is not a good way of looking at temperature split because there's so many different factors. Now, it is true that air temperature splits, delta T's, tend to hover around that 20 degree zone, but they can be anywhere from 14 to 23 in typical equipment. And that's just typical equipment. You get into abnormal equipment and it can be all over the place, especially as we add in variable speed blowers and as we have different load conditions that affect the equipment. So let's talk about the differences here and why that is. First off, we're not just removing sensible heat in an air conditioner running in cooling mode. So we're not just changing the temperature of the air. We're also in almost every market going to be condensing water on that evaporator coil. And that's called removing late latent heat. And so latent heat doesn't show up in form of temperature. It doesn't change the temperature of the air. Another term for it is hidden. It just means latent really means hidden. That heat is not going to change the temperature of the air. It's going to remove moisture from the air and that will affect your delta T. So as an example, if you have a higher relative humidity, you have greater moisture content in the air, then you're going to have more buildup on the evaporator coil. Again, it's the difference between the dew point of that evaporator coil and the temperature of the air going over it. But as you get more water built up on that evaporator coil, Oil, as it's removing more moisture, more of the work is going towards making water and less of it is going towards changing the air temperature, which means that when your air is more humid under all things else being the same, your temperature split, your delta T is going to decrease. And so when you have very hot, humid climates where maybe the air conditioner has been off for a long time, you may see splits that are all the way down 14, 15 degrees, something like that. And that would be normal under those circumstances. Normal for the first reason, which is high humidity, more moisture on the coil means a lower split, but also higher because when the system is operating outside of its normal operating conditions, especially when it's really hot outside, something like that, that can also affect the split. So as the system capacity decreases, and it will decrease as the indoor temperature drops and or as the outdoor temperature goes up. So higher outdoor temperatures and lower indoor temperatures result in lower system capacity. A lot of the rules of thumb that we're used to only really work at 400 CFM per ton, which is very typical across the U.S., and at 12 thousand BTUs per ton. Well, a lot of the equipment that we're installing is operating under conditions that are not going to produce 12,000 BTUs per ton. And that can be because the equipment right out of the box doesn't produce that. And then you add in the actual operating conditions. If you're running a system in Phoenix, Arizona, where it's 115 degrees outside, it is not going to produce the same capacity at 115 degrees that it does at 95. And it will produce potentially more capacity when it's warmer inside with a cooler outdoor temperature. So just to, this is a sort of a reminder about how compressors work, but a lot of what we do in air conditioning is tied to the mass flow rate of the compressor, how much refrigerant that thing can move. And when you have higher compression ratios, higher head, lower suction, that compressor can't move as much refrigerant. Therefore, you're not going to get as much capacity. So there is no chart out there. I'm going to show you a chart real quick, a typical delta T chart that takes into account the wet bulb and dry bulb temperature of the return air. And you'll see those temperatures are all over the place as far as what your delta T will be. But that's just considering that one factor. The one factor being changes in the return air humidity. But then we have 
two other moving parts. We have the capacity of the equipment at different load conditions like we talked about. And then we also have changing airflow. So when you have a variable speed system, you may have it the system designed to drop down to a lower output when it's in dehumidification mode. We do this a lot in Florida. And so you can't trust it when it's in dehumidification mode. You can't trust Delta T when the system is staged down. So if it's a multi-stage equipment and it's not running full speed, now you can't trust Delta T. And so there's just all these factors. In general, all things being the same, higher Delta T tells you that you have lower airflow. So look at Delta T as essentially a ratio between a couple different things. Mass flow rate of the compressor. When the compressor moves more refrigerant, your Delta T is going to tend to be higher. So when your system capacity is higher, your Delta T will tend to be higher. When your system capacity is lower, your Delta T will tend to be lower if everything else stays the same. Then you can all next look at airflow. If you have higher airflow with everything else working properly, you're going to have a lower Delta T. If you have lower airflow, you're going to have a higher Delta T. Then you look at return air humidity. If the humidity in the space and therefore going over that evaporative coil from the return is higher, then more of that energy is going to go to removing moisture. You're going to have a lower Delta T. If the relative humidity in the space is lower, then you're going to have a higher Delta T. But you have to know all three of those things to make sense of it. So you can't just take a Delta T and say, oh, 20 degrees, we're good. You could have a 20 degree Delta T and the system may not be working properly at all because your target may be 23 or 24. Or you may have a 20 degree Delta T and your target may be 15 and it's actually a sign of very low airflow. So there's a lot of different factors there and Delta T is only one of many measurements that you take and taken together can tell you if the system's working properly, but taken by itself really cannot tell you whether or not the system's working properly. Now, when you use modern tools like the Fieldpiece Job Link probes with the Fieldpiece Job Link app or with the MeasureQuick app, now they're going to recalculate on their own what your target Delta T is. And MeasureQuick does a neat thing where it actually adjusts for normalized system capacity based on the conditions the equipment's working on. And it can also kind of estimate the airflow. So it's going to do a better job of finding that target for you because it's factoring in all three of those factors versus just looking at one. And or in the case of the rule of thumb, just saying 20 degrees, that's just not enough. One psychrometer in the return, one in the supply. We've got a, this is our return dry bulb, or return wet bulb, supply wet bulb, supply dry bulb. Now there are sort of like universal charts out there um, that will help you calculate your target delta T, but in this case, because I have a variable speed unit, I have lower airflow per ton. This is a two ton unit. And so you can still see that I'm on the high side of my target temperature split, but my target is showing as 20.8 because measure quick is normalizing for um, system capacity given current conditions whereas most of the universal ones they're figuring 400 cfm per ton they're figuring um, you know kind of standard operating conditions and and in, with this piece of equipment it's not going to produce the same capacity at in real field conditions as it would under some uh, under standard operating conditions or, the, uh, or it's certainly not going to just produce, produce 24,000 BTUs and that's why target Delta T calculators can be quite a challenge. So you can see in this particular case, we're in dehumidify mode. So the air handler is running lower blower speed, which is why we're seeing this current value on our Delta T that's higher than even what MeasureQuick is assuming. It's because we are running lower than normal airflows. This is why as AC technicians, we often get frustrated, for example, with private home inspectors who will go out and they'll shoot a grill with, with a laser thermometer with a infrared thermometer, and they'll say, well, that air is just not cold enough. Well, first off, that's not the place to take the temperature. That's not the tool to take it with because infrareds are very affected by the emissivity of the surface that you're shooting and the distance that you're shooting from. And then finally, even saying 20 degrees is kind of a baseline that's just not good enough unless you happen to know that all conditions are normal, the system's operating normally, then at that point, it can be an indication but it's a poor indicator at best. Hopefully that helps. We'll catch you on the next video.